Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of news to hit today, starting with space weather. To be more precise, that little bright spot you see near the equator turning to the right. At spaceweathernews.com, we've got the last 24 hours of our star very quiet. Little bright spot is a tiny sunspot grouping that is already almost decayed just hours after appearing. It is a spot from cycle 24 and not 25 due to its equatorial location. The solar wind appears to have halted the climb it started yesterday. We entered a very weak coronal hole stream that did produce localized effects in the Caribbean and Indonesian ionospheres, but only minor global effects that you see here on the KP. I mentioned the ionospheric readings because Venezuela, just south of the Caribbean, had a titanic power outage, and without infrastructure integrity failure, it was a surge that their president is blaming on electromagnetic attack. Well, when the nation's major power issues occur during space weather impacts, like we had yesterday, when we're at the modern cosmic ray maximum, like we are now, and when your country is right next to the South Atlantic anomaly, your poorly planned and overused grid is going to go down due to anomalous surging. Quick look at weather in the east where I've seen rescue, flash flood, and storm damage videos coming in from Pittsburgh to New York City. Luckily, it appears that system is charging on quickly. Up first in the news, Mars quakes. A JPL team has determined that they are very different than earthquakes, much, much more slow shifting. Not to mention that apparently JPL believes the wave patterns make beautiful geometries resonating inside the sphere. Let's go ahead and fly out to Omega Centauri, a massive cluster of stars in a tight orientation. There are more than 10 million stars in the cluster, and while our satellites have zoomed in quite well, the ESA just released the best possible shot you can get from the Earth. This was actually taken on Eclipse Day, and it is almost difficult to appreciate what it took to get a shot this good from personal ground technology. Up next, a team of astronomers believes the Milky Way is made of combined progenitors. They say that these masses came together long ago, long before the Milky Way had its spiral shape. These, of course, are all just guesses of a computer program based on assumptions and guesses that they taught it, but it sure is fun to watch. And we're on to our top story, one that takes us far out to the exoplanets and yet reminds us of a critical and overlooked aspect of our earthly condition. They are taking the easiest seen hot Jupiters with close-in orbits and examining ionized calcium emission, detailing the magnetic interactions between the star and planet. They found these magnetic connections to be much stronger than their models predicted, and while that is a fun story of the magnetic underdog pulling a Rudy, it reminds us of the interplanetary fields in our own solar system. The sun's strongest fields are, of course, at the sunspots, but the strongest interplanetary fields, those that stream away, are north and south at the polar coronal holes, which are relatively permanent. But there are also interplanetary fields embedded in the equatorial electric current sheet also coming from coronal holes just at lower latitudes, and magnetically connecting all objects in the heliosphere back to the sun, no escaping it. And that goes double for climate science, because while TSI misses irradiance incident on the total atmosphere, while particle forcing is still waiting in the bullpen to be called in, the interplanetary sun-earth connection bypasses Earth's magnetosphere entirely for a particle rush into the atmosphere every eight minutes. They call these flux transfer events. And it's these fields connecting Earth and Sun that deliver the high-energy protons during the strongest sunspot outbursts. They're also how we predict earthquake timing over at quakewatch.net to complement the location forecasting. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.